So. So. <laughs> first. First. <laughs> Joe. Chad. Welcome to the Anthem Lights Show, episode four. What up, what up? What up? Anthem Lights. Lights. Yes. <laughs> so annoying. I nailed it, bro. Uh, uh, how's everybody doing? Doing great. Yeah, doing good. good. Weather's great. Doing, good. doing good. good, man. I'm tired. I was traveling this weekend. Oh, yeah? Where'd you go? I went to Sacramento. Yeah, oh. to see some friends play a show. Nice. Starting my own band. <laughs> <laughs> He's leaving us. Just kidding. <laughs> With his other band. This is how he let us know, right? Here on episode band. four Family. of the Anthem Light Show. Chad, mm-hmm. I like your hat. Thank you. Looking good. Appreciate it. If you I can't got see, one on video. If you can't Woo. see, so glad zoom I in. It says Millennium <laughs> Falcon. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna we got a great show for everybody today. We're gonna talk about how we propose to our girls, mm-hmm. well, Chad and I. We're gonna talk about the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Talk about a few other things, but first, mm-hmm. but first, but first, we got some updates. Yeah, there's a ton of exciting stuff happening updates. in Anthem Lights world right now. So I'm gonna give those to you right after I take a sip of my coffee. Uh, dramatically, mm. I'll sip with you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Such hey. <laughs> Anyway, Anthem wow. Lights uh, <laughs> update. Um, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Thank what a you. cool day. Thank you. Caleb, man, <laughs> happy Father's Day. Uh, mm-hmm. We released a video for our song, You Will Always Be My Son, which is a song about Caleb's son that I had the privilege of writing with Caleb and our producer, Rob, and... Uh, Chad and Spencer were kind of blurred out in the background yeah, of the we video. Just, <laughs> <laughs> we were in the video. You may not guys. be able to know. We wrote some BKGs and, you know. B- BKGs. BKGs. Brack on vocals. BGVs. 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 Darn it. <laughs> B- what's a K? You're a professional singer, Spencer. BGVs. Wow. My bad. So anyway, K- Caleb, um, <laughs> while we're here, I just want to know how you celebrated your day yesterday. What did we do? So we, uh, Kelsey made me a big breakfast. Which is cool, like waffles Ooh, and stuff. Nice. Made me feel like a king, which was mm. nice. And yeah. then uh, she presented me this little frame that Emmett like took fingerprints. If you want to look on my Instagram, it's there. But oh, man. he like took fingerprints and made paint like a little finger painting on it. Super cool. Adorable. Aww. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it was cool. Again, hope all the dads had a happy Father's Day, even though there's probably like three dads that listen to this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly our target demo, but um, anyway, also. This week we will be re- okay. Use your words, Joe. This week we're gonna release <laughs> our wedding medley. Friday, right? Yeah, Friday. Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we get a bunch of comments on some of our videos, like I'm gonna play this at my wedding, or I want to marry Spencer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, we better do a wedding medley. Spencer does not we get did. married in this. <clears throat> we get a lot. Of, we get a lot of requests from people asking, like, can you be a part of our, my proposal and stuff like that. And and I don't know if we should give away the, the surprise in the video. I'd say no. But no. no. Okay. Well, ignore what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but you just did. So <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, just tune in. Check it out. Really tune special, in and check out the surprise. Really it's special video. It's gonna be a lot of fun mm-hmm. and uh yeah that's all i got boys that's all you got shows out i'm out well, speaking of the wedding medley though um we have two guys in our band that are actually married chad and caleb not to each and, other and uh no not to each other joke always crushes it's great <laughs> joke uh, people are laughing right now with their ear but right. for those out there who don't know about y'all's story um, which I don't think you guys have really ever talked about it publicly, yeah? Maybe just to friends and family. Have you guys ever made a video about it? If not, here's your opportunity to uh, share your story. Uh, okay, well, to answer your question, there is a video of the proposal on the internet. So gotcha. technically, yes. Okay. Um, but I haven't done it on this podcast yet. Perfect. Nor has Chad. No. So, um, <clears throat> so, like I said in a previous episode, my wife was in a girl pop group, um, and so she, they were on tour a couple few years ago when we were dating, and they they had a stop in my hometown, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Well, my brother lives there now. So we weren't getting to see each other very often at this time because she was on tour. Um, And so when she was like, 
she was like, Caleb, I have a break in this random place called Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Should I fly to Nashville? Like, or should I stay there? Or, you know, what, what should we do? And I was like, that's where I'm from. I'm going to just come see you. And like, you can meet my brother and sister-in-law and it'll be, it'll be great. So I flew up there and I kind of, I basically what I did is I told her that my brother and I were going to go see a hockey game because hockey is big in the North and Sioux Falls has a hockey team. And I told her that she should go do like one of those paint, like wine and canvas nights or whatever with my sister-in-law and get to know her. And so she was kind of hesitant cause she didn't know her. And she was like, she, you know, we were just, had just, you know, started to get serious. And so she was like, I don't really know if it's going to be weird if I just go to this random thing with your sister-in-law. But I was like, just trust me, babe, it'll be awesome. <clears throat> so she went and I obviously didn't go to a hockey game. Mm-hmm. I snuck into the wine and canvas night <clears throat> that she was there. And my side arranged for my sister-in-law to take my then girlfriend to the bathroom well, I was looking through the window. I saw them get up and leave. I snuck in. I stole Creeper. the canvas that she was painting with a canvas that said, will you marry me? Mm. And then she came out and saw that. And then I like popped out of a booth and was like, Boom. hey. Adorable. Got down one knee. Then there was a, a flash Amazing. mob. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's cool. so good, man. Yeah, she said I yes, by the way. <laughs> she, yeah. How long have you been married now? Uh, four years and next month. Nice. Nice. So I've been married for um, coming up on five. Uh, I was about a year ahead of Caleb. Um, and so my proposal, so I had, first I'd set this whole thing up really well and her having no idea what it's going to happen because I was very adamant from the beginning that like I have this, I'm sticking to this role. Like I have to, we have to be, we have to date. We have to be boyfriend, girlfriend for at least two years before I propose. I've had that role forever and so she knew that was the role. So she had no thought or expectations of a proposal coming. And, uh, and really with us, I mean, we were officially dating at six months at the point that I proposed, but, uh, I mean, we had a long history and I've known her since she was like 15. And so it's a little different. Um, so I broke my rule a little bit, but I didn't let her in on that. <laughs> so I, um, so I, uh, I, we went to Florida during Thanksgiving, which is where I'm from my hometown, Fort Myers, and, um, had set this whole thing up, you know, my whole family was involved and, and her family was involved. And um, basically just one day I had her go out with my mom and sister and they went and got their nails done. And I went to my church, McGregor Baptist that I grew up at. And, um, and, and the front of the church is like this really cool looking setting with like this pond and bridge over it. And I went and set up like hundreds of candles on this bridge and, um, and where she would get dropped off at was a little ways away. And um, I, I set up letters along the way and, rose petals along the way so she had a path and so essentially my parents my my mom and my sister just drove her to the church and dropped her off and she was like what's going on and she looks and she sees you know a rose and a letter and each letter had something to do with me um talking about in this like around this spot i remember talking to my guy friends about the kind of woman i'd I'd want to marry one day and and um and different stuff like that very you know mythologic stuff. And, um, so as that went on, um, she, you know, kept reading these and got to me and I'm on the bridge and I was, you know, wearing a suit and tie and all that fun stuff and had, um, real rose petals and, and, um, candles all around me and, uh, and proposed. And she said, yes. And then after that, we, uh, uh, I took her to this restaurant where her parents were there to surprise her. She didn't know they were, of course, didn't know they were coming down at all. And so, yeah, that was, that was my proposal. That's great. That's cool. What was, what was your, what was your guys, you know, asking when I proposed your to Joey, to be your girlfriend? <laughs> when I proposed to Joey, I knew he was a vegan and loved vegan food. So, yeah, have we talked about that yet on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few times. Guys, I'm proposals are stressful. They are stressful. stressful. Things. Were you super nervous? Like, oh my like, gosh, yeah. Pukey and I knew nervous? she would say yes, but it was just like, I mean, it's such a big like for their they'll talk about that the rest of their lives like people ask how did he propose and it's got to be good so guys you got to make it good yeah two things they're gonna ask let me see the ring and how did he do it those are the two things Mm -hmm. so get a great ring and a great story Mm -hmm. everything else we're gonna get floods but also great is subjective you know you have to think about your partner your significant other and what they're gonna love you know Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. might not be the same for everyone absolutely so somebody might have a really chill proposal that would sound boring to a lot of people, but don't let that 
discourage you if that's what you love. I feel like he's like setting us up for when he proposes to Joel right now. He's like, it's well, good. It, it might not be big. I mean, it's fine. If someone went, doesn't do that, I it's went and got Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> she opened last fry had a ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I haven't proposed. Was that a, is that the BKG that you were talking about? <laughs> Spencer nice. Spencer placed the ring on the front fry for me. <laughs> My guy. Well. Now we want to transition into a segment we call Geek Out, which is pretty much just us yes. Geek out. talking we about definitely record that. <laughs> Geek Out, Geek Out, talking about uh, things we like. It, it's any part of entertainment that we are obsessed with right now. Something we're watching, listening to, playing, whatever's taking our, atten- our attention in the industry of entertainment. We talk about. So Caleb, this is start us off. Easily becoming my new favorite. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So last night, my wife and I watched Wonder Woman. Yes. Hadn't seen that yet. Amazing movie. Like, seriously, so good. Um, obviously, it could have been really cheesy, as a lot of DC recent films have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was cool. Like, it made women look really awesome, because they are. And I just like I like how it portrayed females. I thought it was very cool. Mm-hmm. So, very cool. Yeah. Good message. Good movie. Joey? Yeah, I love that movie, too. That's not my thing right now. That's not going to be my answer. But it was really cool, just like, the battles weren't... You never see like a film, the huge war scene where it's, just, it's only it's always just only a bunch of dudes like, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. on the battlefield. It was cool to change that image. But um, I'm gonna have to be really honest with you guys right now, and say uh, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> just all <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. I am, I am obsessed with Ryan Reynolds right now. Um, <laughs> don't take your kids to see Deadpool. That's <laughs> so Please don't. That that's a pretty. There's some uh, choice language and stuff in there. But I just went and saw Deadpool because I'm an adult. Deadpool 2. <laughs> Deadpool, Deadpool 2. 2. Yeah, You're and... trying really carefully right now. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll edit he's this out. just so <laughs> funny. I have a giant man crush on Ryan Reynolds. He's he's so funny. And So last night I was flying back into Nashville and I watched The Hitman's Bodyguard, which was a really cheesy movie. Wasn't it funny, though? Like, yeah, it was really he's hilarious. Funny. I'm obsessed yeah. with Ryan Reynolds. Done. Boom. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> You're going to get so many messages now, like Joey and Ryan Reynolds, like pictures of together. Mm-hmm. Like, he would love it. He would ship you so. guys. He would hang them all on his wall. Was the proposal him? That was Ryan yeah. Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Love that. He, he didn't eat the fries, though. He's got to stay in shape for his rolls. <laughs> oh, wait. You know you were talking <laughs> What? No, what are you talking about? You were talking about the movie. <laughs> I thought you were talking about my Burger King oh, proposal. You thought you were just you thought he was touching it in. <laughs> this is awkward. Wow. Uh, oh, Joey man. thought I was making a joke about him proposing to Ryan Reynolds, and you went with it. I did. Yeah, I, 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 did. I was <laughs> laughing because I thought it's everyone was on the same Please, for the love, edit that all out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have you seen Definitely won't. Maybe? Of course, bro. It's Ryan else? Reynolds. Yeah. Have you seen Just, just Friends? Friends? That was... That was oh, just the friends, beginning yes. of my. Which just, <laughs> which just got added to Netflix, by the way. Yeah, okay, so cool. good. All right, we can be done right. talking about Ryan now. Chad. So my geek out, um, other than walking into a GameStop and buying a Millennium Falcon hat, um, <laughs> yeah, bing, bing, bing. right here. Um, I so I've you know I've always loved the Marvel films. Like me and my wife are big, are big fans of them, and every time they come out in theaters, we've seen every single one. And um, but I haven't really watched them in order. Um, so I looked up on this blog, like the best way to watch them in order. And it was like a chronological order of like in timeline, the best timeline way to watch it instead of just like release order. This is the list I sent you. Did you send me a list? I didn't see that list. Yeah. So my, um, so me and my wife decided to go back and watch all 19 of them in chronological order. And so we are on the third, we watched three, we watched the first Captain America, which wasn't, you know, the first movie that came out, but timeline wise, it was, you know, the oldest in mm-hmm. history. And then Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. And next, I think, is um, the Hulk is next. Incredible. And so, Incredible Hulk. That is so cool. So, yeah, it's cool. It's Especially after watching like, Infinity War when, like, all these, you know, storylines come together and, like, seeing these little things as you even watch the first three that are, like, setting up for, like, where it goes. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. So it's pretty nerdy, but, you know, whatever. Let's geek out. Chad, I'm, I'm going probably, to I'm probably dive into that here soon. That geek sounds out. like a good idea. That sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, my... Is Ryan Reynolds in any of those movies? No. <laughs> Green Lantern. Then count me out. He's Green not, Lantern, not but... MCU. I know that wasn't in the MCU, but... It was a Marvel movie. I but know. Disney's buying part of Fox. Fox owns Deadpool. Deadpool could be part of the MCU at some point. I want a Deadpool and Logan mashup movie. <laughs> mashup. I oh, know. Stuck in mashups. You but that would be... 
Um, spoiler let's move, let's alert. Move on. Spoiler alert. <laughs> For a movie that came Isn't out like nine years ago. <laughs> hmm? Logan? Oh. He's dead, right? Yeah, but like... <sighs> no, he's dead, bro. I think Hugh Jackman needs to be done being. Hugh like Jackman. Is yeah, that blasphemous? I hear he's. I hear he's. He's making off. musicals now. Yeah, but I, comics, I, 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 <laughs> comics can do whatever. Last thing I saw is he would do one more Wolverine movie if it could be Logan or with a collab with Deadpool and do the like Wolverine Deadpool movie. So he's dead, man. He's dead. Let it go. Uh, my obsession geek out moment. Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Incredibles was my favorite childhood Dude. Disney Pixar movie I saw that ever. Yesterday. And so Incredibles good. 2, I'm serious, was so good. Like it fulfilled everything I wanted out of a sequel. It's a family-driven cartoon movie which are my favorite. Um the message of the movie is great. He was hilarious. Jack Jack was so funny. I, it, was, it was great. It was literally like... And the short film before it made my wife sob her eyes it out. It was so weird, though. It was was it not kind of weird? It's incredible. You got to get the meaning. The, we'll talk yeah. later. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. So... Incredibles 2. Fantastic job, Disney. Thank you so much. That's cool. It literally... Like, like that's my one of my favorite, if not my favorite, like, cartoon animated Disney Pixar movie. And really they, they crushed cool. it. Yeah. So. Does anyone know why we got three Cars movies before we got an Incredible sequel? That's what I'm saying, man. Which I didn't even watch. Frustrated. What happened the last there? two Cars movies? I think so the last one was like straight to Blu-ray or whatever. I don't know. Hmm. So how old were you when Incredibles came out? Um, Seven, six or seven. I had just moved to Indiana. I still remember I was sitting at home and I would gotten in trouble with my dad and he was like threatening not to take me to Incredibles because we had planned it that night he's like we're not going and I was like so heartbroken and then the next we didn't end up going that night but the next day I was like still grounded quote unquote and I'm just like moping around the house and then he's like get in the car we're going I'm like yes <laughs> nice. and so it awesome. from that moment on I watched it like four or five times I played the PS2 video game um, yep. I had all the stuff I loved that game and that movie so much I watched it all the time and so that's cool. So Incredibles yeah. was to you what Lion King was to me. Probably. Age, age-wise. Yeah. Which they're making a live life, action. A live, live action. action one. They're yeah. making live actions of all the old Disney cartoons now. It's like a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Incredibles 2. Thank you. I. <laughs> we did not get paid to say that. It's though. incredible. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> The World Cup is happening. The U.S. is not in it. Um, do we... It's, it's, it's really, really uh, big right now, obviously, because like it's the entire world coming together to play soccer. But the U.S. didn't make it. Are we having any teams US that we're rooting for? I don't have any teams that I'm rooting for yet, but I, I think the World Cup is one of the coolest things. It really is. In culture. Just mm-hmm. because here in the States, soccer isn't what it is in the rest of the world, but it's it's like it's the jam. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of a glimpse of how, how big the sport is. And it's cool to see like the whole world watching one thing you know like mm-hmm. paying attention to one event so i love it and also i don't know if you guys know this but um next world cup miami right i don't in know miami? if they landed on a city yet but there's going to be some games here in the states that's is, so cool yeah i think it's really cool. be the host state which you means america it. has to make it because it's like required the home mm. country goes no matter what yeah so, <laughs> so we get a pass <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically we could go I think there's 40 like three, and make there's it. three different countries that are hosting Games. Oh really? Oh, That's yeah, awesome. We're one of them. Cool. Well, I know that this is apparently supposed to be either Messi or Neymar's year because I think Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar are like the three biggest guys, and two of them have won, but the third hasn't. And mm. I don't remember which one hasn't won a World Cup yet, but they're all rooting for yeah. one. Ronaldo, I, I could be that's wrong. Guy, I could though. be completely wrong. I need to Google it and, and make sure I'm correct there. But I know Ronaldo has a cup. I think so. I can't we'll speak much into this because I know nothing about it. Yeah, I'm going to sound like an ignorant American, mm-hmm. but I just don't care. I think it's awesome. I really do think it's cool, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not into it. I will say I think it's weird that American <clears throat> football is called football when <laughs> yeah, we could you know, soccer that is, should be the only football. He's just kind of like, football. that's like, that's not plot anymore. This is, I'm going to call this <laughs> yeah. type of material plot. <laughs> did you guys play soccer when you were kids? I did. My well, my dad actually played <laughs> Division One soccer in college, oh, and so I was. Wow! I, he tried to get me very hard. He tried to get me to be a soccer player really hard, and I just wasn't having it. I tried to be a soccer player, and by that I mean I played once with like two friends. <laughs> um, and I was so, crushing it. That's I was not trying. I was that's, so that's bad, trying. like laughably bad, and I was trying to be good. And 
at that time in my life, I for some reason thought that I was a naturally born athlete. <laughs> so I was like, what's, what's going on? Why isn't this working? And I was so embarrassed that I never tried to play again. If I, I see a soccer ball sitting on the ground, I will run the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember constantly getting hit in my shins. I would get kicked in my shins all the time. Mm-hmm. Like literally in soccer, everyone's just in a pile, just kicking right. each other. Well, that's why you, you have the shin away, you're like, I know, but they, don't, they can only do so much. That's true. It's not well, Iron it's Man like steel. A sport where you can't Titanium. use your hands is bizarre. It's it's impressive, man. Soccer, they're, like, soccer, they're so skilled. The like again. bicycle kicks for goals and like everything everything that has to do with soccer, like that's so counterintuitive to what I am good at or will enjoy doing, which is hand sports. Like basketball, <laughs> baseball, <laughs> football. Oh, hands, hand ball. <laughs> um, Big fan of hand, hand sports. But yeah, I don't know. Not but actually. football... Uh, center has the ball with his hands, hikes it to a quarterback with his hands. The quarterback then throws the ball to a receiver with his hands. And really then cool. and then for the first time, somebody uses their foot to kick the extra point. And then and the we call off. that football. Yeah, it mm. makes no sense. Explain that. America. America is weird. I'm moving. Literally could, could have been <laughs> called handball. It should have been handball. Or hit ball. We win some, we lose some, and some get away. Now it is time for Ask, Ask Them, them lights. lights. Question mark. Thank you for echoing Question me, Joe. So, so <laughs> first, first, <laughs> Joe, Chad, <Jed. laughs> <laughs> <Wait, that's> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shine to get him. Uh, uh, so this is from <laughs> Vanessa in Chattanooga. Hey Vanessa. Hey, hey Vanessa. 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 Can I call you Vanessa? <laughs> you're not, you're not on that level yet. <laughs> Can I call you Van? If you could, <laughs> if you could visit anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Clearly, I would visit Chattanooga to see, to Rock see City, uh, my buddy Vanessa, and see my Falls. buddy Ben. No, but for real, this is since she's from Chattanooga. I think it's worth mentioning that if you've never been to Chattanooga and done Rock City, it's really really cool. Totally underrated. Me too. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. People don't talk about yeah. Chattanooga enough. It's awesome. You see a billboard for it every <laughs> two minutes campaign. on the drive there. But see Rock it. City. Um, is that your answer? That is my answer. Wow. A place I would like places. to go to in the world. Um, is it bad that I feel like everyone kind of just wants to go to see Greece and that's kind of like an overused answer? No. 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 I want to go to Greece, but if that's the case, I wouldn't mind seeing Australia too. So. Why? Uh, a box of kangaroo. The, well, just the idea that we're on like a landmass completely surrounded by water that like is no connection to anything else is kind of frightening it's like, kind of like hawaii um and i really enjoyed hawaii but it's like its own little world like you get to experience what australia is and it has no other influence other than itself really so i think that'd be cool that is cool and it's really and pretty there's so many animals that cool. can kill you yeah there, you know so it's cool <laughs> uh for me um i'm just i'm a giant history buff like mm-hmm. i love history and i've only been to really historic places in um you know in the united states and it's just insane to me to think about the amount of like history over in, in, in Europe in general, there's so many places from like, I mean, so, so old that I can't even comprehend. And so like, I just really want to go visit places like that. Um, I mean, there's so many places. I mean, Rome, probably the biggest thing mm-hmm. would be, I think the, staying in the Coliseum would be amazing. Uh, it would be really awesome for me. So You can stay there? No, just, I said standing. Oh, standing. Yeah. <laughs> you I was like, like get staying, a room and staying in the Coliseum. The window looks out over the... <laughs> <laughs> um, ever since I was a little kid... I actually remember them like my family would go to a China Garden buffet a lot for like lunch and stuff, and I saw the one of the, they had one of those light up pictures of the Great Wall of China, and ever since then I've really it's been on the top of my bucket list mm-hmm. go visit the Great Wall of China, and I'm also really interested in just in Eastern culture, um, and the way people live on that side of the world, and I would love to go there and experience it and and walk hike the great wall for for a while that's really cool cool man next question is from somebody whose name got accidentally erased from our board but it starts with a k kayla <laughs> it's kayla 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 yep. oh, kayla it's from kayla mm-hmm. do you kayla. guys say kayla <laughs> can i oh, call wait, you that one. One. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding can i call you ayla <laughs> can i call you <laughs> which city <laughs> that you have performed in had the best food mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone go. I got an answer. Go. Um, I did a tour a long time ago. We were in Texas, and this church 
perf- like made this amazing brisket that was the best 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 brisket steak thingy I've ever eaten like hands down it was so good I was I I ate way too many pieces of it <laughs> and was it's completely always, full. It's kind of a problem when a show has food that's too good. Yeah. Because yeah. you eat a ton and then you're on stage like, oh. For sure. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I feel like a lot of shows will go to like something easy like a Mexican bowl. Like you can just do rice and beans and tacos and stuff. But this like they went all out, got us some brisket. It was fire. That's cool. Yeah. Chad, do you remember on one tour, I think this was before you guys, but we <clears throat> toured like New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California, and every like five nights in a row, we were like in like the heart of the Southwest, and so they had like authentic like Tex Mex and Mexican food, and it was so good. But then like by the fifth night, I'm like, oh, I can't eat any more Mexican. Yeah, it food. was like, please somebody give us something different. It was the best and worst. Mm. Is that your answer? Yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, mine was I think was I don't remember where exactly, but um, yeah, in Texas, I mean, there's different places we go to that. Get, have like the best steak and mm-hmm. it's like no not texas it's kansas mm. has some really great steak and so anytime we go to kansas i'm like where's the steak give me the meat my f- mm. which yeah. is like joey's Midwest, biggest fear cattle farm. <laughs> my favorite food experience on the road ever is um pre-spence sorry bro we all ate at a restaurant called Evely on sunset boulevard oh, in la yeah. in la and it was it was delish that was amazing. anyway all right, so our next question, I'm not really sure who this is from, so it's a mystery question. Um, do you guys ever struggle with anxiety, depression, or anything like that? If so, how do you deal with it? Do you have any advice for those who deal with these issues? Um, I'll kind of take a stab at this. It's a very serious I do question. have who this was from. It was from right. Nicole. Nicole. So hey, thank Nicole. you, Nicole. Thank you for asking Appreciate this, Nicole. It. What up, Nicole? Good question. Um, so I first want to start off by saying that we are not – doctors we are not psychiatrists we are not anything of that stuff so anything we say or anything is what that noted um but man it's this can be um obviously you know you hear about so many people who have recently committed suicide and it's a big thing around the news like especially celebrities and stuff and it can be a very serious thing and so i first Mm -hmm. off want to say that if it's something that you really are struggling with and you're not getting Um, professional help to please do so Mm -hmm. Um, it's very important and if and it's also important to know like and be aware that you may not be aware of what's going on but if any loved ones around you kind of you know drop hints or say anything about it like please listen to them because it's hard to to know yourself sometimes Mm -hmm. Um, some some things uh, some things that I think I, I know for me like I don't necessarily have an issue with anxiety or depression. I know that I have seasonal depression. I know that there will be seasons and like if it's rainy or gloomy out like all day, I'm just like snap out of it and I'm just like automatically in a bad mood that day. So I'm aware of of that kind of stuff. But uh, I know I don't have like, I know it's not like a big um, thing for me on anxiety or depression, but I know there on those times where like anxiety can take over or depression or anything like that making a um making a gratitude or joy list i think is really important um to take take some time especially in those times where you're feeling super anxious or really depressed or stressed or whatever take time to make a list of 10 things that you that just make your soul happy and like think of 10 things that you could do to that just that feed into you and like Mm -hmm. something you love um like even if it's like I'm gonna go walk my dog or I'm gonna go walk on the beach or I'm gonna go walk in the woods or whatever it is, um, and then go do those things. Um, and those things uh, a lot of times can help. And just making a a gratitude list, um, a daily gratitude list to practice gratitude, I think is huge when it comes to the depression side of things. Because you know, being depressed is it's easy to think the world is you know everything's out to get you and everything is. Um, just you know it's just negative and you just think of the worst things and so if you can continually practice um gratitude and list down things consistently to remind yourself how blessed you are how thankful you are for this person how thankful you are to be in an air-conditioned room and have a bed and like all those things above i think that kind of stuff would go a long way so um wow great yeah you knocked that out of the park chad brooks brooks sister uh, dealt with anxiety for a long time and so just got to speak (laughs) to her for this with on on this topic for a long time and like what how she did to how she, what she did to 
um, handle it and manage it. And honestly, for her, when she decided to go vegan, and this is kind of, um, you know, Joe, I think you can attest to this for some things as well. It's just that what she chose to eat and not eat had such an effect on um, her her well being. And it's not to like tell everybody go vegan if you're being depressed or or dealing with anxiety, but it was like such a thing that she didn't realize would have such an effect on her um, well-being, but she, it, it did. And as she started to eat healthier food, she ate more greens, she ate more veggies, she ate more fruits, and just like put more positive, healthy things into her body. She realized how much of her mental and emotional state would like be affected by it as well. And um, and I think that we don't give enough credit to the the foods that we eat and the thing, the way we treat our body in effect to like things that we're dealing with mentally and physically. Um, so not only just adjusting her diet, but also just choosing not to let anxiety and depression define her, but to, um, you know, be own, own who she was, was just like mind blowing for her and how it helped her. And so I haven't dealt with it, but that's the closest, um, I mean, obviously I've been depressed before, but like, I've not had it be such a thing that I needed like medical help. And she did. She needed medication and stuff for it. And that was like one of the easiest things and best things that she could have done for her body to really get around that and be able to handle it. So that could be some advice. Uh, When I was a kid, actually, let you guys behind the curtain a little bit. I was clinically depressed for like six months or something. And I went to see a doctor and I had like I had a chemical imbalance. And so I got on some medication and it, it totally corrected it the issue. So Hmm. I'll just say like, if you know someone who is struggling Mm -hmm. with depression or anxiety and you're just like, Oh, why can't they just be happy or snap out of it? Like it's, it's not, that's like asking someone with diabetes to stop having diabetes. Like it's, it is a medical condition in some cases. So, um, it's a real thing. So I guess just have grace and patience and, uh, and encourage people that struggle with it to see someone. Or if you are struggling with that, go talk to somebody. There's no shame, no like judgment, like we all have stuff we got to deal with. And so it's important to take care of yourself. Um, and then for me, like I do struggle with anxiety just daily. That's like one of my big things. I get overwhelmed with um, just what's going on. I'm not great at knowing what I'm feeling sometimes. Um, and so something that's really helped me is just daily meditation and just getting alone and having a time of prayer and contemplation and mindfulness and just like putting my phone down, getting away from all people and screens and just like having time to think and try to get in touch with God and myself. And it's, it's really, really helpful. So I encourage you to try that if you never have. So, um, I actually feel a lot of anxiety specifically when it comes to people. I, um, I love, love people, but Sometimes being around people feels like a mountain that there's no way I could possibly climb, you know? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes there there are times where like I've needed groceries or and I just like can't get myself to walk into the grocery store. Like I've driven there and sat in my car and driven home before. I don't know, it's weird and then like it's yeah, we don't have to go into it, but to answer your question um who, Nicole, right? Nicole, mm-hmm. yeah, Nicole. Yes, uh, I've, I've, I feel that, and I feel depressed at time, and I think the two kind of go hand in hand for me. And I was just talking with someone this weekend. It's funny, creative people are more prone to live in that world. I feel like, but they also have to be very public with their lives, and interactive with people in order to be successful. And it's always, it's just a really funny, Mm. uh, paradox. So anyway, yeah, the great question. Thanks. Good question. Mm -hmm. It's important stuff. Also, one other thought, anytime I've felt depressed, I feel like it's interesting because the advice I would give is don't let yourself be an Island, like Mm -hmm. be around people. But when you're in that moment, being around people feels like impossible. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how to deal with that contradiction, but yeah. Yeah. Great thought. Great thoughts, boys. Great question, Nicole. Thank you. If you guys have any questions for us, please don't hesitate to email us just like Nicole and Kayla and Vanessa did at anthemizinggmail.com. 
And that's been our show today. What did we learn? Joey, what did you learn? I learned that... Uh... Pass. Mm. Chad, what did you learn today? I learned... I learned that Joey's going to propose with Burger King. <laughs> Don't tell Jewel. <laughs> Jewel would know. It's, it's me and Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah. I learned that Chad thought the word nostalgic was nostalgic. <laughs> I also learned that Spencer thought it was BKG. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he took mine. That was going to be It nice. was at me. I had to be the one to respond. I, had, I was going to defend you and make oh. that. <laughs> um, I learned that... I guess the World Cup is coming to the U.S. in four years. <laughs> So Sweet. yeah, boring. Is it a lot? I than learned four years? that if Caleb could go anywhere years. in the world, he would go somewhere that he's already been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> he, uh, likes, he likes them rocks. Joey, where can people find you on social media? Joseph Stamper, very, very professional. Mm. You have to say that every time. Chad M. Grant, very professional. Mm. Middle Thank initial. You. Thank you. I like it. Spencer K. Music on Instagram. I am Spencer Kane on Twitter. Spencer Kane everywhere else. Very unprofessional. So, <laughs> it's hard, man. Everyone I mean, had Spencer Kane. Instagram had Spencer Kane. Twitter had Spencer Kane. Name, bro. So annoying. Uh, I'm at Caleb Grimm pretty much everywhere. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Spencer. Woo. This has been the Anthem Light Show, and we are out. Bye bye. Peace bye. out. Yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> hey, 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 hey.